Good morning, good morning. Facebook Live, Thursday morning. And for some reason, my... Music isn't running like it should, but I guess it will here in a minute. <clears throat> this spectrum stuff has been crazy over the last few days. Just get on here. Praise God. There we go. May the 6th. Right? May the 6th. Today is the National Day of Prayer. You guys get a chance to today. We need to pray. Amen. We need to pray today. Paul says we should pray without ceasing. I think that would be a good day. This would be a good day to pray without ceasing. Good morning, Veronica. Jesus, whatever is going on with the fire department this morning, just help those people out today. Thank you, Lord. Listen, we're going to finish up our we're going to finish up our chapter in James chapter 5 and then we we'll, we will kind of go through the national day of prayer and uh, we'll kind of pick out the things that we want to pray for this this morning or today okay James chapter 5 verse number 7 
Oh, wait a minute. James 4, 7. What does James 4, 7 say, Miss Veronica? <laughs> hey, Miss Julie. Good to see you this morning. Praise God. James 4, 7. Submit to, resist the, <laughs> amen, submit to, resist the, praise God. Thank you, Lord. James 5, 7. Father, give us ears to hear, give us eyes to see. Again, God, I just want to hear your word. I want to hear your spirit. I want your bread. I don't want nothing from me, God. Everything from you. I want to glorify you. That we may lift you up. That we may draw ourselves unto you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We want to draw near to you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard on the you have heard of the perseverance of Job, and seeing the end intended by the Lord, what the Lord is very that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no, lest you fall into judgment. Amen. We'll stop right there for right now. He says, be patient. Right? See how the farmer waits patiently for the fruit of the earth. And he waits to receive the early and the latter rains. He says, be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near or at hand. Amen? You know, this has been a very, very long, enduring time. Uh, for me, anyway. And I see that, especially during this season, and again, everything's a season, okay? We have to take things as they are, but we only endure things for a season, okay? there's, And, and that's the concept that God wants to give us, okay? To everything, there is a season, uh, under the sun to everything there's a season there's nothing new under the sun everything has a season so there's a beginning and an ending okay and when it comes down to a season of time the farmer has a season to plant and he has a season to grow and then he has a season where he harvests right and so there's a three there's three processes are three different seasons, and uh, you, you 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 have to have the one with the other, right? They have to kind of run together, and uh, and if you miss one of the seasons, 
chances are you're not going to get the end result, okay? And it's kind of like what they were saying about Job. He says, look at the, you've heard of the perseverance of Job and seeing the end intended by the Lord, okay? Now, this is really critical, guys, because we have to understand that God has a purpose for everything under the sun. And he says that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So, the end intent. Okay, what is God's end intent? Well, obviously, it's good. It's a blessing. It's the reward, right? And and there's there's always there's always a reward because God's always good. Amen. And it doesn't matter what kind of scenario we find ourselves in because eventually again everything has a time everything has a season eventually there's going to be an ending to the thing that we found ourselves in okay and i'll say it again if god brought us to it he'll get us through it right and so i'm looking at this present scenario that we are in uh, whether it's a personal thing, whether it's a uh, 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 local thing, or whether it's a national thing, okay? I can look at uh, the nation. I can look at my community. I can look at my family. I can look at the world, right? I can look at all these things and come to a conclusion that, you know, God's still in control, and the thing that he promises, the things that are in the end, the intention of God is good. So whatever happened, <laughs> whatever we're going through, if we'll be patient, we'll receive a reward. If we're patient and stay within that concept of faith, you know, God's purposes and plans are good. And we, we don't have to swear, you know, which is something that we, tra we, you know, swearing, and I've learned this, guys, swearing, in a sense, is manipulation. Um, and the reason why is, is, is because we're trying to make something happen and, and force it to happen. And we have not the power nor the authority, nor the control, because uh, we're not God, to try and make something happen. Uh, technically, if you're making something happen, it's called witchcraft. And that's why God says we should never swear, okay, or, or have an oath. You know, if you, if you look into the aspects of swearing and an oath, right, uh, and, and, uh, and I understand some, some oaths that we take, you know, like us in the military. Uh, good morning, Wyatt. Um, you know, I had to swear an oath when I was uh, in the military uh, to, you know, to the, you know, an allegiance to the Constitution. Um, I don't think that's necessarily bad. But there are others, because I'm not necessarily trying to manipulate anything, right? And that oath is still, I'm still under oath, um, technically. Because the oath is never, uh, the oath is never renounced, okay? But when it comes down to swearing, you know, you, you hear people say it all the time. I swear, Pastor Mike, I swear. Listen, you're trying to say something that you know you're not going to do. I, very few people who ever swear, you know, on their mother's grave. Every person 
I can almost say 100%. I, I want to say 100% because it never happens. Okay? Because their intention is trying to make you think that, you know, it really matters. That what they're saying is true. Okay? But why not just say yes, I'll do it, or no. Okay? And let your yes be yes. You don't have to swear. You don't have to. Be, have enough integrity. Have enough fortitude within yourself to do as you say. Okay? Now, if you can't do it, don't try to make it happen. If you can't do it, you can't do it. You know, we were talking about uh, what the other day we were talking about uh, not trying to be procrastinators, right? It's under the same pretense, right? We can't say that we're going to do this and that, okay, tomorrow. We can't say it because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But we can say what we can do today, okay? If, if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we should be able to say, yes, I can do that or no. And, and let it be, let it be that. Okay. Don't go any further because then we can fall into uh, a trap and be caught lying. And, and then it just makes things harder because again, God really cares about relationships. And a lot of times, you know, money, And what we say, you know, really hinders our relationships, right? And and again, I want to be truthful. I don't want to lie. And so, you know, if I catch myself before, what 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 did James say? Be quick to hear, slow to speak. And slow to judge, right? Be quick to hear. So you got to hear yourself talk, right? (laughs) Maybe you need to stop and think about things for a minute before you speak. Right? Think about things, guys. You know, my grandma used to do that all the time. She'd say, give me a minute, give me a minute, you know. And and she'd come back and say, you know what? Um. we can do this, you know, because she would always ask God. She'd always ask God, you know, and, and I tell you, uh, she was accurate. She was accurate all the time. She was accurate. So I, I'm just saying there's a precept here uh, that God wants us to learn when it comes down to uh, who we are, right? And we've got to be patient, especially during this time and hour. Again, I can't make things happen, uh, which is, I think, one of the issues that I think we tried to, this whole political thing on both sides of the spectrum, you can see how people are trying to make things happen. And really, we just need to have some faith in the Lord. Because he's still in control. And his end intention is good. He is not going to allow our country to be destroyed. He is not. Because there's too many people praying. There's too many people praying. And you guys understand that there has to be answered prayer. There has to be fruit right? Good fruit. There has to be good fruit because the devil does not have control over time, right? Uh, Jesus says that he holds the keys to hell and death. He has the authority in heaven and on earth. It has not been given to anybody else. Now, we may have, as ambassadors, as those who have had the opportunity to receive or be delegated some authority, we may have given up some authority as human beings because we can do that. But ultimately, God still is in control. 
And there's nothing that the devil can do without God already knowing what's happening. So have some faith and be patient. Watch and see what God can do. Amen. Watch and see what God can do because he's still the Lord. He's still our Savior. He still hears our cries and he understands our affliction. And, you know, though he's though he tarries, the Bible says he is not without compassion. You know, look, look at Job. Job went through many trials, many hardships, and yet God was compassionate because he wanted, he wanted us to see that there is a man, there could be a man without the Holy Spirit, without the scriptures, who would be able to contend with the devil and still overcome because of his will. Amen. Because of his love for the Lord. I mean, that's powerful. That's powerful. You know, again, I, I look at Abraham. I, I want to have the faith of Abraham. I don't want to necessarily have the faith of, of who we are today. I want to have the faith of Abraham, who still was able to reason and talk and communicate with a God without having, you know, a structure. You know, all he had was a relationship. And that's the reason why Christ came, was to give us a relationship. And out of that relationship came structure. You know, we don't need structure. That's called religion. Jesus didn't come to give us another religion. He actually came to destroy the aspects of structure so that we can get back into that relationship. Because we don't need structure. Listen, the Bible, the Bible says that the law is not made for righteous. The law was made for the unrighteous. They need structure. They need to know what's wrong. I don't need to know what's wrong. I know, I already know what's wrong. <laughs> I already know what's wrong. And I'm actually obedient. Those who know what's wrong and still are going to do it, regardless, need structure. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> anyway, today is the National Day of Prayer. And at 6 o'clock this evening, we will be uh, joining ourselves with 13 other pastors in the area. And the, and the uh, Mayor Moss has said that he was going to be there. And our new... Um, Our new chief, what was his name? Ah, I thought I had it. Our new chief of police is going to be there as well. And um, it's going to be awesome, man, because number one, we're actually going to be able to pray over our new chief for the first time. You know, I've been in with the National Day of Prayer for at least 10, 15 years, and we've always had the same chief. I love, I love Chief Skinner. I will love him till the day I die. He's an awesome man, okay? Uh, great guy, great guy. And I'm going to miss him. And I've been praying for this new chief. And from what I hear, this new chief loves the Lord, so... That's good. Amen. The, this new chief has some integrity. Praise God. So I like that. I like integrity. I like the fact that he's a bona fide Christian. So he's going to come and pray with us today. And, uh, you know, I want to pray over him. You know, if the Lord would allow us to lay hands and, and, and anoint him, you know, Give him the opportunity to be blessed by 14 pastors from different denominations, from different uh, cultures. You know, I, I think that I think that's beautiful. And uh, we, we get to put him into a right state of mind, you know, where he, he knows that we're backing him up. He knows that we're praying for him. 
You know, that's awesome. That's what we did with the, with the new mayor, with Mayor Moss. Uh, last year, he, he came to the National Day of Prayer, and, and we prayed over him. You know, it was awesome. And uh, I love doing that. I, get, I feel like I get to be a part of something, you know. And it's like, whoo you know. But uh, today's the National Day of Prayer, and we will be praying at the City Hall Park, which is right next door to City Hall. And uh, we will have 14 pastors praying. Okay, um, <clears throat> and we, the um, the overall theme uh, uh, this year is now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that's found in Second Corinthians three seventeen. Okay, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay. So I see freedom this year. I see freedom. What we've come through is a, a time of bondage. Well, I think we're going to be set free. <laughs> Praise God. A new year. Amen. A new opportunity. A new season. Can I get an amen? This is good stuff, man. This is good stuff. So, um, you know, in, in our time of prayer... There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different things that we will pray about and pray over this year. And uh, if you guys will come, uh, that would be great. But there's seven things that you guys can pray about. And if you would today, take one of these areas, okay, and, and pray today, okay? Take your time throughout the day and just pray over one of these seven things. We're going to pray for the home and for the family today. Amen. How many of you guys know that God really uh, values home and our family? He wants us to be structured together through love. He wants the family to be a family right one one father one mother okay um, that's the way he has ordained it from the beginning of time uh, he had adam and eve and that was our structure that was the nucleus of our of our life was through a family so we will pray for our home and our family we're going to pray for our schools uh, how many of you guys know that we need to pray for our schools? Again, during this time and hour, uh, there's a lot of manipulation going on, a lot of doctrination, pro uh, propaganda going on to where our public schools are being, you know, um, forced to teach things that are not necessarily good things to talk about. And so we're praying for our schools. We're praying for the church, the body of Christ. We're praying for the church. How many of you guys know we need to pray for the church? You know, Jesus says in John, I think it's John 16, he, he prayed that we would become one, you know, as we are with the Father, as he is with the Father, so we need to be with him and him with the Father as well. We all need to be one. We need to learn how to break down denominational lines. We need to learn how to break down the cultural barriers. You know, we're, we're not supposed to be divided. It's never, it was never God's intention. Look at the intent of God, the end intent of the church for God. And it is to be a beautiful bride. He's not supposed to have many brides. He's supposed to have one bride who's united in love, spotless, without wrinkle. Amen. He's coming after a bride. We are to be the bride. That's God's intent. So we have to pray for the church. We have to pray for the media. 
and the news outlets and the social media outlets. Definitely need to pray. Amen. I thank God for these media outlets. I really do. I thank God for Facebook. I thank God for YouTube. I thank God I don't use Twitter. Uh, and maybe that's a good thing. I just don't see any sense of just giving off a few little sentences. <laughs> I got something to say. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we got to pray for these things, that we would continue to have peace and, and equality, right? That we will have uh, uh, our First Amendments, right? The freedom of speech. I mean, this is the reason why we're on here is because we all have rights. Now, we all have opinions, too. And we all can technically say what we want to say. We have no barriers, uh, which is good and bad. But again, if you get a bunch of crazy people on here from one side or the other, it can make things difficult. So we'll pray that God will continue to allow us to have media and a platform to be able to um, get the word out. Amen. Because I, I tell you, I love to be able to get my messages out uh, to all my family and friends. I tell you, I don't necessarily have a big following. It would be kind of neat if I had millions of people. But there again, I would have millions of other opinions. So maybe it's a good thing that I just stick with where I'm at. Amen. But pray for our media, you know, our news networks, our social platforms. We need to pray for our government both local and national governments, amen. We need to pray for our president, pray for our Congress and Senate, pray for our uh, governors and, you know, our elected officials there in the, uh, in the state house, amen. We need to pray for our local governor or local mayors and, and um, city council and county council, Amen. I tell you guys, again, I thank God that things are different here in Gaffney, Cherokee County. I thank God things are different. Uh, we're, we're not like everyone else, and I don't want to be like everyone else. Can I get an amen? I like my, I like peace. I like being able to walk my streets. I like the fact that I have friends from all social in economic areas and and we actually love each other we actually pray for each other it, it, the, what's going to happen today is is enormous because uh we actually have unity here in cherokee county it's a great thing and i i love the fact that you know the city council is uh predominantly christian uh we again have different values but we're always going to have different values. We're never going to be totally 100% like each other because uh, we can't have, you know, a bunch of, uh, um, not zombies, but <laughs> thank God there's only one of me. <laughs> Amen. Thank God there's only one of you, you know. Uh, I don't think we could stand more than one. <laughs> Amen. I'm just saying, if everyone was a, was a clone, we would all be a bunch of boring people, right? But pray for our government today. Um, pray for our businesses within the city. You know, our business, I tell you, um, as I was talking about yesterday, yesterday was really kind of like a judgment on those who are stewards of their money, right? Who are stewards of the things that God has given us. we got to be careful how we uh, steward our finances, how we steward our resources, and how we take care of people. Uh, we really do, man. I pray 
that God would change the way that we're doing business and, and get back to God. Amen. And then last but not least, we are praying for our military. Okay. We're praying for our military and probably going to add in our officers, police officers, and our local and state uh, law enforcement. Okay. So, uh, and we'll have chief, our new chief in there as well. So, uh, I'm, I'm telling you guys, um, we've got to pray. This has been 267 days or 268 days. And, um, I've seen a lot of good things happen. I've seen a lot of good things happen. So we just got to continue to be patient. Because we're coming into another season. And we may not see our fruit yet. You know, again, there's there's planting seed. And then there's the growth of our seed. And then there's the harvest of our seed. So we got to be patient. Amen. I planted seed the other day. Got to be patient. It's just not going to come up overnight. I wish it would. But we're now into the growth season. Amen. we got to allow things to grow. So, you guys ready to pray? You guys ready? I thank you guys so much. Listen, the Bible, Bible says that we only need two or three people to gather together. So, I'm always encouraged that there's more than just me. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm always encouraged. And... We tend to always have a good time when we're together. Amen. But where, where two or three are gathered in his name, the Bible says we can have whatever we ask and these things shall be given us. So today's the day of prayer. Amen. We're going to pray over all of these things today and ask God to give us grace, to give us mercy, to help us be patient. Because God's got a plan for every one of these things that we're praying about. He's got a plan. And he told me at the beginning of the year, he says, Mike, the things that I started last year are going to be finished this year. Okay? So we still got some time left. Amen? It's only May. So we still have, what, seven more months well, actually, probably about five more months before the harvest, right? Four or five months. So uh, I'm, I'm just saying, what God started last year, he's going to finish this year. Okay? We've got all kinds of hope that uh, what he says is going to come true. God does not lie. His word does not come back void. And so uh, we're in anticipation, Right? anticipation <laughs> he's making me wait <laughs> amen <laughs> i don't know where that song came from man that was back in the 70s was well, <laughs> some of you guys are not old enough to remember that song <laughs> amen but uh it might have even been the 60s i don't remember uh, maybe you guys can help me out with that. Anyway, let's pray. Father, we come before you. <laughs> sing it. <laughs> no, I don't want to sing it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you, God. We actually are just going to lift up our hands right now, God, and just just say, God, how much we adore you, God, how much we really uh, admire you, God. And we just want to 
lavish you with love and affection this morning, God. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our adoration, God. You are so faithful, God. You are so faithful, God. You are so faithful. Your word is true. You are so faithful, God. Every single day, we are in your presence. Every day, God. The word declared last night, if we would draw near to you, you will always draw near to us. And God, here you are again in the midst of our presence, God. And I thank you. I thank you for your faithfulness, God. I thank you for your being trustworthy, God. I thank you, God, that you see us as individuals. You see us as a group. You see us as a community. You see us as a family. You see our needs, God. You hear our cries, God. You understand, God, what we're going through. And it's not just a few people praying today, God. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of people praying today. Maybe hundreds of thousands, God. Maybe millions. Being that today is the National Day of Prayer, God. Maybe today millions of people are humbling themselves and praying today and seeking your face, God. It would be so awesome, God, to have millions of people falling down on their knees today, acknowledging you as being God, acknowledging you as being Lord, acknowledging you, God, knowing that you are faithful, God. And the end intent, the end intent of the scenario that we're going through, God, is going to be good. It's not of evil, God. It's not of evil, God. It's not of evil, God. Your end intention is good because you've promised, God, to give us a hope and a future. And the future isn't for me. The future's for my family. The future's for my grandkids and my great-grandkids, God. You said that the blessings of Abraham, God, are generational, God. And God, I've been fighting hard for my family. I've been fighting hard, God. It's not for me, God. It's for the generations that go after me, God. The blessings of Abraham, God, are for my generations, God. That they may know you. That they may know you, God. I'm sowing seed, God. I'm, I'm moving a road, God. I'm preparing a place, God, for you to come. For you to come, God. So that generations of people will know you, God. God, that's the... That's my intention, God. That's my purpose here, God, is to prepare a place, to repair the breach, restore the streets, so that we can dwell with you again. God, that's the mandate of my heart. God, your intentions are good. Please hear our cries today. I know we have to be patient. I know there's a process. But God, give us some hope today. Reassure our hearts today. Give us a steadfastness in our hearts today. Let us be known that you're with us today. God, there's so much media out there. There's so much negativity out there. There's so much hopelessness out there, God, that we, we tend to focus on the things that are before our face. And we don't get the chance to find you face to face. All this stuff, God, could be just tormenting us. And I've chosen today, I've chosen today, God, to lay down everything else and, and pick up your word today, God. And you've encouraged me again, God. You've encouraged me again today, God. You've encouraged me. <laughs> Have 
patience. Have patience, the word says. Be patient and know me. Know my intention. It's for your good. Your future's at hand. It's for your good. I thank you, God. <laughs> Woo! I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. All of our work is for is not for nothing. Our work has purpose. Our work has purpose. There's good seed being sown in the good ground, and there's going to be a good harvest. I thank you, Lord, that this is not for nothing. You see us, God. And there is a, a former and latter rain. There is uh, something coming down from you. There is a watering of the seed. There is an intentional taking care of the harvest as it grows. We are not alone. We are not alone. You cover us and protect us and keep us from harm. We thank you, God. I thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You are so good. Everything I have, God, is in your hands. I have nothing else but to trust you, God. I have nothing else but to love on you today, God, and to work and to do and to be who you've wanted me to be, because everything else is in your hands. Everything, God. Everything is in your hands. Those who place their hope and their trust in you, the Bible says, will never be ashamed. Will never be ashamed. Lord, we place our hope and our trust in you, knowing you know all things, God, whether it's a personal thing, whether it's a family thing, whether it's a community thing, whether it's a church thing, whether it's a, a, a an area thing, God, a, a, a statehood thing or a national thing, even a worldly thing, God, you have everything in your hands. God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Do not allow the devil, do not allow the wicked forces, the principalities and powers, do not allow those things to <coughs> have dominion, God. I do not allow them to have dominion over my family. I do not allow them to have dominion over my city. I do not allow them to have dominion over the things that you have given me, God. I do not allow this to happen. I renounce these things. I command these things to leave. I speak life and unity and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the head. You are God. You are the Lord. Lord, I apply the blood of Jesus over everything that we're praying for today. Cover us, God. 
If we have sinned, forgive us, God. Renew our minds and give us hope. Encourage our hearts today and let us see the salvation of God. Even if it's by faith, let us see that faith, as it says in Hebrews, God, faith is a substance of things that we hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We don't need to see it right now, God, to know that it's going to come. Because it's a substance. It's tangible. It's already here. That's why I'm not walking by sight. I'm not walking. I'm not listening. I'm not going to agree with the things that I see. Because God, you're more than able to turn this thing around. You're more than able. You're more than able, God, to do as we are asking, as we pray, as we petition. You are more than able to answer our prayers. Prayer doesn't change things. God changes things through prayer. Prayer does not change things. God changes things as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we just pray over this entire day. I place my hands on this agenda that we have today, God. I place my hands upon every pastor who's supposed to be there today. I ask that you protect them right now in Jesus' name. I ask that you strengthen them, God. I ask that you go before us, God, and lay out a pathway of peace. Keep us protected, God. I pray for Pastor Antonio, for Pastor Mary Jeffries right now, God, and anyone else, God, who may be feeling ill effects. This devil hates us. This devil hates us, God. He's trying to take us out, God, and I've seen your mighty hand already bring life into these mortal bodies. But God, it's not my will that these people are sick. Strengthen them right now in Jesus' name. What the devil tried to do for evil, God, turn it around for good right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I speak life in the name of Jesus. I break the curse in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the ill effects that have happened, God, turn them around right now in Jesus' name. Strengthen the mortal body. Strengthen the spirit. Strengthen us, God. Give us life. Give us life. Give us peace in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us will prosper. And every word that rises up against us, we will condemn. Gather the saints of God today. Gather your men and women who are called by your name. Gather us together today and let us pray. Let us pray with conviction. Let us pray out of a heartfelt love for you. Let us pray out of a heartfelt love for each other. Let us pray, God, and not be hypocrites. Let us pray, God, with sincerity of heart. Let us pray and reach out to you. May you hear each and every prayer, God, that comes out. May you hear the word being spoken, and may the word be conformed, uh, be, and may the word be brought forth. And uh, and and uh, um, uh, what is the word, Lord? Uh, not conferred, let the word be backed up by signs and wonders, God. Because God, you have brought your people to this place today. Let it be confirmed 
with signs and wonders. Let your word be confirmed with signs and wonders as we pray today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray for my family today. I pray for my family. I thank you, Lord, for my family. My wife, my daughters, my sons, my grandkids, my uncle, my aunts. my cousins. I pray for them today, God. Pray for my wife's family today. God, you've got to come through. You've got to bring reality of your presence in my family. As we pray for our families, may you hear our cries today. Because God, you have ordained families to be the nucleus that brings forth everything else. If we don't have families, God, we don't have cities and communities. If we don't have families, God, we don't have the church. We don't have any kind of organization. Reunite our family. Bring it back into order. And let us recognize the value of what we have. Thank you, Lord. I pray for all my friends today. All my friends today. Those who are going to watch today, Lord, if there's anything that needs to be done or said, let us agree right now that these prayers are going to be answered. God, if there's anything that needs to be said or done, the Bible says if we pray in Jesus' name that we can have what we ask for. So in the name of Jesus, we ask, in the name of Jesus, we petition you, God. May you hear our cry and save us, heal us, deliver us, redeem us, and bring us back to the original intent, to the original intent of your design. <laughs> Father, let us stay close to you today. Let us hear your spirit. Let us hear the word and be doers of the word and not just hearers only. God, guide and lead us as we pray today. And let us be sincere in whatever we do and say. Let us do it with sincerity of heart. Knowing, God, that you hear the righteous. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous are heard. So God, have your way today. Bless us today, keep us today, and let us see your glory today. Let us magnify your holy name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. I want to end the prayer with the Lord's Prayer. If you guys would like to say it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we will forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I'm messing up my computer, man. <laughs> you can't handle me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that something, man? I see you, Miss Ellen. Jacob. Good to see you, sir. Praise God. <laughs> Carly Simon, 1971. Man, I was a young kid at the time. <laughs> Amen. In the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right, Ryan. Hey, Laura, I see you. Praise God. Yeah, I don't like Twitter. I don't like Twitter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, listen, guys, it's time that I go to work. Amen. But uh, listen, six o'clock, if you guys can come and join us tonight, we'd love to have you. We've always had a good turnout. Uh, this is a new season. And we got to be patient. Okay. Just got to be patient. Listen, Hosea 10, 12 says, Sow for yourself righteousness. Reap mercy. Plow up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until he rains righteousness on us. So we want things right. But we first got to plant the seed of righteousness. And then we got to plow up the fallow ground and seek the Lord until he reigns righteousness. So there's a season of time for everything. There's a season time of planting, a season of time for growth, and a season of time for harvest. We're in the growth stage, praise God. So you just got to be a little bit patient. Amen? God's word does not come back void, for it will accomplish what it has been sent out to, to do. Amen? So, I love you guys. Praise God. Another good day is at hand. Let us go and be good stewards. Amen. Lord willing, I'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock at the City Hall. Uh, if not, I'll see you again, Lord willing. See, I said Lord willing. Tomorrow morning. Amen. On Friday, May the 7th. Okay? I love you guys. Be blessed. Thank <laughs> you.